Hello once again, Jose Rodriguez back. As you saw in my previous video, I printed a picture that someone else took of a dilapidated interior a building. And uh, it was quite beautiful, actually, even though it was in total ruins. And this is what we were able to produce on the 8550. This is Palo Duro's soft gloss rag from Red River. One of their finest art papers. And again, I absolutely love it. But now I'm going to show you. And unfortunately, this is going to be, you guys are going to get mad at me. But this paper is no longer available. But I just want to show you what something of a top, top quality type surface can produce on something as simple as an 8550. This is San Gabriel 1.0. I got it as a closeout because basically that's all they had left the mill that produced it. I don't know what the issues were, but they stopped producing it. I believe it has been replaced by another name, but I don't know which one exactly it is. It might be the Big Ben Burrita. Who knows? We'll check later. We'll actually check with Red River. But what I have done is loaded two sheets and we're going to go ahead and print two images. Now, here's the problem. There is no profile for the 8550 for that paper. So we're going to cheat and use the same profile that we use on the Palo Duro soft gloss rag and see how well that performs on that paper which came way before the Palo Duro uh, version. So let's go ahead and check Q image, make sure we have everything set correctly. Here we are. I have posted one photograph. This is going to be the color one and then we're going to switch over to black and white mode. That does not utilize an ICC profile. It utilizes a mode that basically is manual in the driver itself. So let's go ahead and check our settings. 8550, premium photo paper semi-gloss, 11 by 14, rear feeder, and the Palo Duro soft gloss rag profile. Let's go ahead and print it. We'll see how that comes out. And then we'll turn back and do the black and white, which I will do in black and white mode. And that should be interesting. The test that we did over the weekend uh, seemed to work quite well. We'll just have to repeat it just to make sure we're doing everything correctly. All right, so let's go ahead and click in OK. Okie doke, now let's go back to me. It loaded OK. I made sure to curl the corners downward a little bit because that's the same situation as the previous paper we just ran and I don't want to have any problems with uh, the corners getting nicked by the printhead because it is a rather thick paper. All right, it's already printing. Let's go ahead and set up while we are here key image for the next job because that's going to take a while. All right, I'm going to remove this image. We're going to go back to the driver and physically enter it this time. So we're going to enter here, set it to black and white mode, right there, color, black and white mode. Same paper choice, except now, get this, we're going to go ahead and just let the printer driver control color. I don't think QImage can yet do that automatically for us. In other words, when you choose black and white mode, it will not set the driver to letting the printer manage color, which is what it has to do because we're no longer printing with any kind of paper profile. We're letting the driver do the job for us. Let's go ahead and look for a black and white image that we can utilize. I may have to look elsewhere. I don't think I have one here. Okay, this one looks like a good one. Actually, I think that's this is the version of that one. Hey, let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to remove these borders, these um, strokes. Basically, we'll do that by doing this. Like so. We'll go ahead and add some sharpening. I usually do two and about 180. And that will drastically improve this image. It's not a very high resolution image to begin with. Only 3732 by 2232. So that's, you know, we're going to print that in an 11 by 14. That should be just about enough 
to get us by. So hit OK, OK, boom. See that? Now that border is gone. And we have a very nice looking and high dynamic range image to work with. All right, let's check our progress here. I did not get any, any kind of corner marks. Great. That's really looking good. So this is going to be cool because I didn't realize I had the black and white version of that same exact image. And of course, we're going to be using black and white mode, so that's not going to matter. And I'll go, before I begin to print, I'll go through the settings for that. There are some specific settings that you must have uh, on, your, on your job for it to come out normal. In other words, what you see is what you get. Last night I was talking to Mike from about 7 to 10 at night, three hours. We had a nice long video call and um, he was telling me, Jose, you know, you're, you're basically underestimating the 8550. Now remember guys and gals, he set it up with pigment inks. So that kind of throws a monkey wrench into the system because of course, he's going to have to now print mostly on matte type surfaces because most third party pigment inks really do not perform very well in this type of media unless you have some kind of a gloss enhancer like the Pro 1000. The various, uh, a few of the Epson printers had that ability, but not every printer. So you're not going to have that, that nice smooth look that you do when you print with dye on a burrito type paper or semi-gloss or glossy or whatever the whatever the level of gloss or shine is. It is done. Let's take a look at it. Of course, it's just gorgeous. Look at that. Holy cow. I should, uh, yeah, this deserves, you know, to hang on the wall. So again, the surface. Look at the surface, it is smooth. Look for marks, look for roller marks, look for any kind of mechanical uh, problems that may be transmitted to the paper surface by the printer. And I see none. I'm purposely showing you the slightly glossy surface sheen so you can see clearly whether there are any problems or not. And again, gorgeous. All right, let's go ahead and jump back to QImage. I'll set the uh, black and white mode correctly for you guys to see. All right, here we are back. We're going to go back to printer and settings. And we're going to go into the driver itself. We are using black and white. So what happens is this. When you go to more options and advanced, you get this. You don't get that other one we had that shows you ICM and, you know, sRGB and all those other modes. This is what's incoming and this is what's going to be outputted. But notice the settings that you have to choose. Darker. That makes absolutely zero sense. Watch what happens when I click on normal. Look at look at this secondary picture. This This basically represents output. This is input, output. Now watch what happens. See that? It got lighter. Dark. Uh, almost matching. Darker. That's a match. Now, here's what you do. When you are printing, there are no profiles, remember. So, everything is now controlled manually. So, the beauty of it is that as long as you have a good ink set, you're going to get a neutrally or non-neutral but linear tone. In other words, if it's set to neutral, then you're going to get a neutral tone from black to white if you have a black and a white as well. So what happens if you, for whatever the reason, get a slightly greenish result? You know, that paper surface just happens to not like your 8500 inks. You can adjust that here. Say it's getting a little bit greenish, you're going to pull back to the opposite. You're going to add a little magenta to diminish or you're going to reduce, subtract green. And that means going directly across green into magenta. If you go too far, watch what happens on that output image. You're going to get a magenta look. So what you do is you wait until it is done printing, examine it under a proper viewing condition, and determine whether you have any kind of color cast. If you do not, then you're good to go. Look for your 
print brightness. If it matches the input and the output matches as far as density, you have to do nothing. Okay, you don't have to do a thing. And that's what we hope occurs here. So we'll leave everything at the default setting. Remember, darker. Okay, color toning, neutral, right? That's what we want. So let's add that to make sure that that's what we're going to hopefully achieve when that print emerges. Okay, okay, and print, and then okay one more time. And let it load. Then we'll go back to me and uh, we will hope and pray that we get a gorgeous result that is also neutral. Okie doke. So I think at this point, we're gonna go ahead and turn off our Q image. We'll leave this running and we'll come back to me. All right, paper is loading right now, as you can see. And again, this is, this is always experimental because you really don't know how that particular paper is going to react. Black and white mode, whether it's for Canon or higher end uh, Epson printer, which is then categorized as advanced black and white. In this one, it's a simple black and white mode and you just have to judge it. You go ahead and print it, you look at it and you determine if you have to make adjustments using that globe with the colors, the color wheel. So remember, if it's one color, you subtract away from that color. And that's it, you do it gradually and then reprint. And you may have to do like a, a, a default adjustment for that particular paper. If all you do is print black and white, this is a wonderful way to print black and white. You don't have to really worry about having very, very precise profiles, which are really required for very, very precise black and white output. You don't have to worry about that when you print black and white mode. What inks is it using? Well, it's using the gray a lot. It is using the black for accents, not for, for grays, for accenting the darkest tones, but it's using yellow, magenta, and cyan to create grays. Compositing them together, it creates a gray. By adjusting the amounts of each color, you will achieve a neutral gray tone from the lightest, just under paper white, all the way down to black, supposedly. Nothing is perfect, remember. I will be able to see right here, this illumination, exit illumination lamp here. Uh, it's very well balanced, so it will give me a really good preview of what's coming out, that printer. Yep. During the live stream, I went ahead and printed some cards as well. All on Red River card material. This is Aurora. Let me show you what this is. This is a painting on one of the streets in Old, Old Town, Annapolis, Maryland, the state capital. This is one of the famous lighthouses in the Chesapeake. And I turned all of those images to paintings. This is Forest Glen, Maryland. It's an old uh, eight, 19, from, from 1895 to 1904. It was a girl's finishing school. And just a regular bit of clip art on a card. This might be cute enough for you to send during Christmas. So in QImage, you can create a layout, which you can then use to load multiple images, one on top of each other. They're not going to be really literally on top of each other. They're all going to be as part of a job. And then you load the required number of cards in the feeder and proceed to print them. That's it. If you have um, ideas of creating sets that you're going to then sell, you can buy the envelopes. They fit perfectly. You can buy the card stock and then just simply load your 10 favorite card type um, images print them 10 at a time put them in the envelopes and then or not not you don't even put them on the envelopes you put the envelopes and then the cards on top on the box they even sell you the box so printing them uh, on this printer is super super low cost 
I was telling Mike that I think it's going to take another six months for me to be able to uh, drop. <laughs> Here we go. We're done. Again, let me check the corners. No marks. Wonderful. And holy, holy camoli. Look at this. Okay, this, this just, it, it, I, I don't know what to say. And you know me. I'm never at a loss for words. But this is ridiculously good. Black and white mode, folks. Convert your color images to black and white in Photoshop. You need to do a conversion, not just desaturate them. And then proceed to send those images after you've done editing them. You can do that in, in Lightroom as well and other photo editors that have that mode. And then go ahead and print them using black and white mode. Simple. Again, remember, we set everything at default. There was no adjustments made. You saw me do it. So, you know, there you go. Let me put the two side by side. One color and one black and white. Gorgeous. Just gorgeous. Now, let me tell you something that's really, really cool. Now, in Lightroom or in Photoshop, and also I think in QImage, but it's not as convenient as Lightroom and, and Photoshop. You see, you see that the boat has a red uh, right there in the front, red and then yellow. Obviously, the red is lower density than the yellow. When I converted it, it looks the same density. I could physically adjust the density of the red by simply moving a slider and it would have darkened that red nose so that it would look basically a density change like it's right here it's, you know it's definitely darker than the yellow portion and it should have then be reflected here but i just did not do that so you can do that you can get away with all kinds of tricks when you convert to black and white and you can manually adjust the density of certain colors if you have a green and a red side by side, but they happen to be the same density, you can actually either darken the red a little bit or increase the brightness of the green. Even though they used to be the same density, and when you converted them to black and white, it's like two similar grays. And you can then differentiate them from what used to be just the same shade of gray. You can make one lighter than the other. You can do that. It's really, really a neat trick in... Uh, I need to start utilizing them because otherwise I will end up with a boat that's basically the same color, you know, a, a light gray. All right, that's it. You can see that that thing kicked it out of the park. Okay, hit it out of the park. Home run. You see what I mean? Wonderful. I'm looking for something that that I just cannot do on that printer. I told I told Mike, and he was like, "Well, uh, yeah, he knows. He knows it's a fabulous printer. It's just that he." prefers the higher end printers i was telling him that this would be the perfect printer for just the overall person who happens to be a hobbyist in photography graphic arts whatever the case may be anything that has to do with the artistic arts that you are then going to go digital and you need to produce prints this will do it you saw it can i print a document obviously of course you can, on any kind of paper. Can I scan? Sure. Can I copy and print? Sure, directly, without a computer. So that's, that's, that's it. And then the key in all of this is the inks. How can you argue against that, right? Anyway, all right, that's it for now. Enough bitching about that. Maybe this time because i'm not refilling anything maybe epson will sort of agree with my video they usually do not because i am always promoting refilling they know anyway thanks so much again don't forget to subscribe share and like happy printing everyone bye bye